The cow and has some fungi. So Malaysia has absolutely, I don't know, ruined me. channel my name is drew and let me tell you guys guess what you've been waiting for it i've been waiting for it and we're in a new city gotta love kuala lumpur it is amazing but i think we've stayed there long enough and it was time for a little bit of a change so we are out with the old out with chinese new year it's done and now we are in malacca malacca has a campaign that 2024 is the year to visit. So we didn't visit because of that, but Yin had gone with her family to Malacca a little bit before. She had showed me all these pictures and sent me things when she was with her family there. And I was back in Kuala Lumpur and I was like, wow, that looks pretty neat. So we made it a point to go and visit for a month. This vlog today is kind of just the bare bones of Malacca. It's our introductory vlog. It gets us in. We see a little bit of the architecture, a little bit of Jonker Walk, which is probably the most famous thing in Malacca. We see a little bit of the river, but just the tiniest bare bones. And I taste some food there, which ends up being one of my favorite things that comes out of Malaysia. This should be quite a great vlog. However, in the vlogs coming up, we will be seeing more of the sightseeing stuff of what you want to see. You'll go back to Jonker Street and see way more of the night market. We'll see the night market during the day. We'll see the night market at night. We'll see the river things. We'll see all the other little fun alleyways and the architecture. That's what we will see a lot of coming up. So don't worry, this is just the introductory, like I said. If you want to see the other stuff, you should subscribe down below to get those notifications. And I think we should get this party started. walking around we found these kampongs kampongs oh it's such a hard word guys anyways we found these kampongs and that translates directly to the word village they are all over malaysia i would assume they're more of the indigenous way of living these ones that we first came across in malacca are the kept up ones that are for tourists and they're very nice. We've seen some of these in Kuala Lumpur as well. In Kuala Lumpur, they have these little houses and villages in the midst of skyscrapers, so that's really cool. But in Malacca, it was just here, and you will see that most of them have the shutters, they're made of wood, and they're built up on stilts. I would assume that's for flooding because a lot of Malaysia is near water, but also you will see in this footage that they're storing stuff under, and that's where this family like hung their clothes to dry. So after you get past like the really pretty touristy one in the front, you can go towards the back, towards the back of the kampong. Kampong, oh, sorry if I get that wrong the entire time, but you actually see where real people live. They were singing happy birthday. I don't know if it was somebody's birthday or party or if it was they were singing different songs as well, just entertaining themselves. It was just fun to go back in there. In fact, I was like, am I supposed to be back here? And at one point this dog was yapping at me and I was like, okay, I'll leave this little area. So that's our experience in the Kampongs. The Kampongs in Kuala Lumpur are more for probably lower class people. Maybe immigrants come in there. I'm not for sure. If you do know, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear more about your thoughts on these in Kuala Lumpur, even around the country. If they're special or if just lower class people live in them, because sometimes they have like shacks and everything amongst them in the city. On the subway stations, a lot of times they're on the subway line. And so it's just a whole different experience in Kuala Lumpur versus the fancy ones for tourists.
me over to Junker Street, which is a night market. And I would say, like I said before, it's one of the most iconic things in Malacca and what people go for. It operates three nights a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, every single week. In fact, you kind of get used to the people that are there. If you go multiple times, you'll know exactly where people are because they're there every single weekend. It's like one of those classic night markets, Asian night markets, where they grill the meat right in front of you. They have so much fresh seafood here. We didn't try any. <laughs> no, that's a lie. We do try some, so stay tuned for that. However, these little shellfish, I went back to them multiple times, almost every single time we went by Jonker Street. I went back to them because they would like squirt and almost hit you with the water or would hit you with their water. They are so cute. However, there is a before and then I will show you the after, which is kind of sad because you know they just died and that hurts my heart. I don't know what happened to me guys. I used to be so tough and not care about animals like dying for food because it's not really that big of a deal. The older I get, the more I can't handle it. And I'm just like, they're just these little creatures wanting to live their lives. But they're tasty. <laughs> love doing that. I think it's funny. I love using the word meander. It's one of my favorites. Anyways, we hit the muscly man and he is just out of the blue in the middle of something. I'll have to look on my footage to see what he actually was. So I'll try to zoom in for that for y'all. It's like some kind of world record. Malaysians have this Malaysia's book of world record, especially in Malacca. It's all over Malacca. Like there was a Malaysian book of world record at the largest cat store um the largest amount of cat products it was like this whole billboard thing it was really funny but anyway so here's this little man not little big and then people would pose behind him with their muscles i don't have much but it was probably made for really cute photos
footage of me eating Li Ching Kong. How I would personally describe this is an everything but the kitchen sink iced tea dessert. One, sorry about the noise of the background noise. In Malacca, I've actually bought a microphone. As you can see, I have it right here. So that is going to get better as time goes on, but this footage, nothing you can do. And I don't want to skip it just because of that. But two, my initial thoughts of it, I was so skeptical. I was like, what the heck are these ice desserts? And why would anybody put ice in their dessert? I was so skeptical, but after I show you this footage, I'll tell you my actual thoughts on it now because I end up really liking it. Here we go. The ingredients of this are ice with tea, an odd white fungi or fungus, I don't know, peanuts, black and red jelly, red dates, and there might be some more. I can't remember, but it's an interesting thing. It's like you're eating cow intestine, is what that fungus is like. The peanuts are good. The cow intestine fungi, the jelly should be okay. It tastes like tea, like black tea. But the jellies are hard. That's kind of annoying. Tastes like tea. <laughs> so, Malaysia has absolutely, I don't know, it ruined me or changed my life completely by putting peanuts in their dessert. Malaysian peanuts are absolutely delectable and supreme above all other peanuts that I've ever tried in my life. We were actually gifted some peanuts that I eat as snacks. They're bigger, but the perfect amount of roasty, salted peanut flavor, absolutely delicious. But anyways, this dessert was light, refreshing, cooling. Whenever I ate the dessert, Afterwards, I was really cold actually because we were sitting in air conditioning, but I was cold But then we stepped outside and I was so thankful that I had this dessert So you can definitely see the appeal of this dessert especially when they didn't have air conditioning Or didn't have as much air conditioning as they do now You're sitting outside eating a dessert. They put ice in it. It's gonna melt pretty quickly because it's freaking hot It would just cool you down overall. So it actually probably has a very unique history if you know the history of it, comment down below. I would love to know. If you think the South has something on sweet iced tea, Malaysia also has it. A lot of countries actually have sweet and iced tea, so I'm not for sure how that just became a Southern thing in the US. But anyways, the sweetness of the iced tea with all the stuff in the dessert, along with the saltiness of the peanuts, I could probably eat this dessert every single day. I've completely done a 180, not a 180, because I didn't mind it in this. I just didn't know what to think. It's so delicious and delectable. You all should try it. Definitely give it a try. Alrighty, folks. If you want more of Malacan sightseeing, touristy things, my normal life, there's a lot of cool things in Malacca. You should subscribe down below. I would really love that. Give this video a like. Let's go out and make the world 1% better today. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.